The patient is a 39 year old male who presented with severe pain and acute diminution of vision in the left eye for two days on a backdrop of left sided headache for eight months. At the age of 10 years, when he visited his ophthalmologist for diminished vision, he was told that he had an inherited retinal condition and these images were obtained from his records. He was prescribed glasses and no additional treatment was advised. He underwent surgery in the right eye for eye pressure five years back. There is no history of trauma, significant systemic or a family history. His best corrected vision was 6 by 12 in the right eye and 6 by 18 in the left eye and the refraction was hypermetropic. Significant findings included pseudophakia with PCO in the right eye and a phacic left eye with mild corneal edema and shallow anterior chamber. The IOP was high in the left eye and gonioscopy showed 360 degrees uh, synechial angle closure in both eyes. The fundus in the right eye could not be clearly seen because of PCO. This was the fundus appearance of the left eye. So what are we dealing with here? Considering the salient points of this case, we have a 39 year old male with an inherited bilateral retinal condition who has already undergone some glaucoma surgery on the other eye and who has presented now with an acute on chronic angle closure in the left eye. Regarding the retinal condition, the spoke wheel pattern of the fundus and the typical hyporeflective cavities within the various retinal layers is characteristic of retinoschisis. Other conditions can also mimic this picture. Exlinked retinoschisis, though rare, is one of the predominant causes of macular degeneration in young males. It occurs due to a defect in the RS1 gene that encodes for retinoschisin. Macular schisis is seen in nearly all cases with the splitting occurring mainly in the nerve fiber layer though other layers are often involved. The full field ERG is electronegative that is a reduced B wave in the presence of a normal A wave. Autosomal dominant schisis, unlike the X-linked variety, does not always have macular schisis and ERG is often normal. In autosomal recessive schisis, the ERG is normal and the condition has been reported only in females. Enhanced s cone syndrome is autosomal recessive progressive retinal degeneration with characteristic ERG changes that is a severely reduced or absent rod responses. Night blindness is present since birth and there is diminished color vision. Though macular schisis is one of the classical features, the main finding is that of numular pigmentary changes along the vascular arcades which is not present in this patient. Degenerative retinoschisis is an age-related peripheral asymptomatic condition seen mainly in individuals over the age of 40 years. There was no pathology in this patient to suggest a secondary CME. Primary CME is mainly distinguished from retinoschisis by the absence of leakage on fundus fluorescent angiography. So based on the clinical features, it looks like our patient could be having any one of these conditions. CNA can be ruled out as there was no leakage on fundus fluorescent angiography. With regard to these, excellent retinoschisis is the more common one with the other two being extremely rare and in the absence of a definite family history suggesting otherwise, excellent retinoschisis can be diagnosed in most cases. In this case, genetic testing was done and an RS1 mutation was found and so X-linked retinoschisis was confirmed. Coming to angle closure in young individuals. Our patient does not have the clinical profile of any of these except for this. Going back to our clinical profile of the patient, he had a similar condition in his right eye for which he underwent trabeculectomy which was complicated by malignant glaucoma which had to be treated by clear lens extraction, IOL implantation, goniosynechiolysis and vitrectomy. 
Coming to his present condition, the patient was started on cartiazole, brimonidine and prenzolamide eye drops and oral acetazolamide which did not bring down the IOP significantly. Uncontrolled angle closure with 360 degree sinical closure is an indication for surgery. Considering his small eye, sinical angle closure and the stormy post-op situation in the other eye, a clear lens extraction with IOL was performed as a primary procedure combined with a trabeculectomy and goniosinicolysis. The patient developed malignant glaucoma one day after surgery, which was managed similar to the other eye. An alternate method of treatment of malignant glaucoma would be low-dose diode transcleral cyclophotocoagulation. Angle closure has been described in some cases of excellent retinoschisis, the pathogenesis being related to anatomical uh, structures such as a shallow anterior chamber and short axial length caused by the RS1 gene mutation. It is expected that these cases would help residents to be able to differentiate the various conditions that mimic X-linked congenital retinoschisis and to acquaint them with a complication that may prove difficult to treat. So that's it for today. 